inside another dimension, face battling barbarians and evil magic on a quest for adventure in a maze of monsters. Once you get into it, you'll never be the same. Hero Quest. Now with two new adventure packs, the legend grows. Hi, welcome back to Not Your Mother's Hobbies. And today we are doing the last of our mercenaries for hero quest frozen horror here we go we got the scout pretty cool sculpt really like the shield the pose is very action oriented pretty happy with the sculpt it was one of the miniatures that i was actually pretty happy to get into uh, or looking forward to so without further ado let's get into it All right, starting things off, pretty simple. We're gonna do Basilicanum Gray here for our steel metallic blocking. Anything that's gonna be our metal armor, we're gonna block in as usual with Basilicanum Gray. She's got some interesting armor here, so make sure that you leave that belly gap open for the undershirt, as well as a collar up top uh, by her chest. Try not to fill that in. And her sword also has some ornate details too some gold so just take your time be precise and go around that decoration we got wildwood here for the undershirt getting all those pockets and folds and armpits and behind the knees and all that jazz don't forget her little belly gap too and uh, behind the shield i'm not going to show a lot of behind the shield but i will let you know right now that getting behind there is a little tricky so take your time. That's one of the reasons why we put the Basilicanum down first is because it's dark, it's gray. If you make a mistake, hey, we're covering that with metallics anyway, and it'll get you used to getting in there. Here you can see that neck chest collar area and what we're doing with that. Gorgon to fur here for the bracers, the belts, and the leather straps behind the knee guards. There is a strap behind the shield you can try to get it if you want, but it's not necessary. A lot of that detail is going to get all covered up. And you know what? She's got leather bracers on as well. So you can just be a little loosey-goosey back there and just try your best. We got snakebite leather here for the boots. We're also going to use that for the trim of the tacit. The handle for the sword. And once again, behind the shield. Don't have to be too precise here. We're just sort of filling in that back shadow area with some color to, to, you know, cover up any really gross white spots or whatever. To just blend that shadow and those colors together. You don't have to be too precise, but, you know, it's sort of to give some warmth back there. Agrax Earthshade, again for the tacit, and also the boot cuffs. We're going to do this one on here. We also have something special on this guy because she has a shield. Uh, in the artwork, it's actually got some pretty cool uh, detailing here where instead of it being just all metallic, they have this sort of cool, like, pale painted section around the emblem. So we're going to use the Agrax Earthshade on that as well. Blood Angel's Red for our little, I guess it's a loincloth part. We're just doing that like normal. Let's get it in there. She doesn't have a lot of that loincloth visible, so... This is sort of a little accent in there. Try not to forget it. It's easy to forget. It's such a little sliver. Boy, we are just We're using Black Templar for her hair. She does have an ear poking out, so be careful around that area. Take your time. Now, I didn't make a lot of mistakes on this one or feel like I made a lot of mistakes or needed to go back. But remember, you can always paint over stuff with a white or an off-white. For example, Wraithbone. Don't worry about it. If you make a mistake, just paint over. Uh, it's it's only paint. Cover it up. Give it another shot. You're golden. Just like this gold blocking here. Oh, segue! Uh, which we're doing with Gullum and Flesh. And you can put this Gullum and Flesh on her hands as well. And I know that the artwork um, is a darker skinned female. We're going to do tanned skin. And I'm going to show you how we do that. So we're starting with, or at least I like to start with, a Gullum and base and do a glaze over top. All right, we've got gunmetal here to start building up those metallics. 
just go over all of your armor pieces. You don't have to go over the whole area. You can if you want, especially if your metallic is thin. You will keep those accentuated zenithal hi highlights, or I guess in this case, zenithal shadows, uh, if your paint is thin enough. But otherwise, just go over those areas, um, and then anything you miss is going to get easily blended in with those grays and deep shadows. Don't stress, go over it, stick to the topmost areas if you're lazy like me, <laughs> and then put some null oil gloss to tie it all together. This one, you want to cover everything, because even those shadows or grays that you missed, they're all going to blend together and get a shine on it, and then they'll all look metallic. We've got Retributor armor here and putting that gold on. Just over the emblem, the rim of the shield, and the ornate decoration on the sword. When it comes to that little middle part on the sword, uh, that could be a little fiddly. You can use a thinner brush or a steady hand. Uh, just do your best. And then once more, we top that off with our gloss shade. In this case, it's Reichland Flesh Shade. And just go all around that. This will give it a nice rosy gold and make that gold really stand out. And if you want to, and this shade darkens things too much, just take your Retributor, go back and pick out some of the topmost areas or any of the areas that smudge. You can just go back on that. We're using Rackarth Flesh here for some textured highlights on the pants and the undershirt on her clothing basically. You can just use some stippling or some little tiny slashes and swoops to give texture to these areas and make them look a little more like cloth. And don't forget that little collar area. Just be careful, take your time. Use a thinner brush definitely <laughs> for this section here. Uh, you can see I'm using mine. Wraithbone, we're gonna use this for the boot cuffs, we're going to highlight those boot cuffs, as well as the padded tasset. Uh, for the padded tasset, just stick to the top half uh, of, of these little diamonds and just feather down. You can use little textured slashes and swoops, just feather halfway down or more, up to you. You could also edge highlight these areas if you want, but I chose to do like a feathered half thing. You can also use this on the top half of the shield or this little top uppermost part to just give some extra light on that painted part. We got Cadian Flesh Tone. We're gonna clean up some of that Gulliman Flesh that was pooling on the back of the hand and just differentiate her fingers and uh, smooth out some of the features on her face. We don't want too much shadow on her face because we're gonna do a glaze later. So put a little bit into the eyes and the cheeks. We don't. We, we can afford to go over those areas lightly, lightly with thin, thin paint or drier paint and to just brighten up those little cheeks and eye sockets because those will be filled in again later with a glaze, a dark glaze. Kislev Flesh for our highlights. This is where we can really bring up those cheekbones, uh, the forehead, the chin, uh, and the ear, as well as fingers in the back of the hand. Same with Pallid Witch Flesh. This as well, we can really use for highlights. Do not worry about, um, you know, covering more of an area because we're gonna glaze. Don't worry about that. This and Kislev Flesh are business as usual. Stick to those high points. Make that contrast in those areas. Cheeks, nose, little forehead ridges, and finkies. Okay, and here comes the glaze. Now, usually I use uh, an Agrax Earthshade and I go over, but in the last time I did this, I got the idea to maybe use a more red tone. And so we're going with Reichlin Flesh Shade. And I was pleasantly surprised that it gave a much more natural look. Here we go with our Chrome. Hitting all those little high spot pings. Remember, you can use the light above you as a guide for where you might want some of those highlights and pings. Wherever it's shining off of your shiny armor already, you can then pop those little highlights in there 
um, where where you can see them guided by the light reflecting. Or, like for example, the shield, uh, you can just play around and experiment. I know that a round surface is going to give kind of like a streaked oblong look. And so I did that. I didn't do it perfectly. I don't know the exact science behind it. But I know what it kind of looks like. And I felt like this came out pretty good. Don't forget that little belt buckle. I for sure didn't. I was just saving it for later. Gullum and Flesh here, we are using to accentuate some of the shadows here, like in the bottom of her, her cheek, the little cheek pocket. Just some extra shade in there um, to deepen it out, rosy her face up, and give, give some more of that face shape shadow. We're using Caraberg Crimson here as well for our lips. And our cool Claremont style black hair. <laughs> our X-Men, 90s X-Men black hair uh, highlight. So we're gonna use this blue and go around where your highlights are gonna be. So crown of the head, and then she has a big ridge down her back that would probably pick up some light. Then we're going in with bold titanium white and just doing some tiny little scratches down those uh, highlights in their centers. And here you can see that ridge on the back, and we're gonna do the same thing down here. And in that sense, you can see how there's different volumes of hair can give you different highlights along the body of it. it doesn't have to always be on the top. And then we do our basing as usual. So that's a little bit of a gray paint, a texture paint, a dry brush, a shade, and then another dry brush to bring it all back up. And there you have it, our finished scout, the final mercenary. I'm really liking how this one turned out, especially that new kind of recipe for the, the tan skin. Just switching over to a rosy uh, shade, a more flesh shade, that really made a difference to me. And I think I'm, I'm definitely going to be going towards that more than an Agrax earth shade to get that brown I'm looking for, that deep, like, fleshy brown. Um, but yeah, there you go. There you have it, our last one. And here's some comparisons of how you could do it differently to just differentiate them, separate them a little bit, make them all special in their own way. While that's going on, uh, let's talk about the monsters. That We're done these guys, we got monsters coming up. We're gonna do the gremlins first, pretty sure, cause they're little tiny baby boys. Just in time to mark in the holiday season, We've got all these little wintry guys coming up. I think that'll be really fun and thematic for the season. How did you guys like doing all of these mercenaries? I hope you enjoyed that they were done in separate videos, even though they used many of the same paints, many of the same techniques. I hope you got th something out of me separating them into different ones, and it didn't feel like padding. I, I tried to make it that each one had a lesson, at least with how to do a different skin color or skin tone, or to show you how you can use the same colors with just a little bit of a different technique to get something different. Let me know in the comments down below how your Frozen Horror adventure is coming. If you're painting anything else other than Hero Quest, let me know that too. Give me a likey, subscribe. If you like video game content, check out my Twitch, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye!